The basics of this study is that it was a 30-year observational study from the Nurses' Health Study, the Nurses' Health Study 2, and the Health Professional Follow-Up Studies. But right away from the start, it's important to realize this was observational. There was no intervention. People simply lived their lives, and the researchers collected data and then crunched the data. So this is widely recognized as you know, a weaker level of evidence, especially when compared to randomized controlled trials or even non-randomized intervention trials. The main finding was that they found that those who ate the most red meat compared to the least had a slightly higher incidence of type 2 diabetes, with a hazard ratio of 1%. 1.6 for all red meat, 1.5 for processed red meat, and 1.4 for unprocessed red meat. So the hazard ratios range between 1.4 and 1.6. The paper clearly states that those with higher total red meat intake had a higher body mass index, more total energy intake, they were less physically active, they were more likely to be current smokers, and were less likely to use multivitamins. So in other words, they were simply less healthy at baseline. That's not because of the red meat, they were just less healthy. This is called healthy user bias, or in this case, unhealthy user bias. So what are the takeaways? Look, these studies get a lot of attention and headlines but they don't deserve it. There's virtually no correlation. If someone's eating a high carb, high red meat, high calorie diet, they may get type 2 diabetes. But was it the red meat or is it the sum total of their diet and potentially their other healthy or unhealthy lifestyle habits? I think it's clear the answer is the latter. And this kind of weak observational data doesn't tell you anything different.